All right, all right. Um, let me, let me, let me, let's focus on this right now. Katarina, by the way, who is the project, or I guess was the project lead for Destiny 2 and in its big annual expansions, left us with a tweet just the other day. Some bittersweet news. After an incredible time at Bungie and with the final shape out, it's time for me to take some time off before I embark on a new adventure. More on that later. But I'm excited for a new opportunity to build something from the ground up. The decision to leave wasn't easy at all, but I'm incredibly proud of what we've achieved during my time with this team. Being part of Bungie has been an absolute dream come true. Bungie games have inspired me since childhood to become a game developer and were a source of inspiration for me throughout the years. So many of my still to this day best friends come from playing from having played Halo 1 through 3 and I met some of the most special and important people in my life playing Destiny. I've built memories for a lifetime. It's no surprise then that my time at Bungie has been nothing short of transformative. I've cherished every moment and learned immensely from each one of my co-workers in this community. It's been an honor and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to work on my favorite game. The determination to deliver experiences you, our players, will truly love is something I personally take very seriously. And Bungie and the Destiny 2 team were a place that allowed me to do just that. It's been so fulfilling. I look forward to seeing all the amazing things Bungie will accomplish in the future and my Guardian will be overjoyed to experience all that they're cooking alongside this awesome community. To my Bungie colleagues, your talent, support, and friendship have made this journey unforgettable. Much love, Paradasia Adastra. That's a that's a terrible blow. That is a terrible, terrible blow. And I put it up there with like Joe leaving. I don't know. This this yeah. This well, that's that's the other thing. It's like you know now we're questioning what is the future of big annual expansions for Destiny or or the future of Destiny in general because you're seeing key figures and when I say key figures uh, at our you know our time at Bungie just a month and a half ago it was a month and a half two months ago Cat was fantastic I mean she was this was a passion project I would say for everyone at Bungie but especially for her and she was dialed in soaking up literally every thought every experience every facial expression we had when seeing certain things yeah. She's a gamer, man. She's a gamer. And um, Bungie is, I, I hate that Bungie is losing her for whatever reasons. This takes us to the article here from Paul Tassie. With Destiny 2's expansion lead leaving, will we keep getting expansions? From Paul here, in the wake of the very successful launch of the final shape in Destiny 2, one of the key leaders who helped make that happen has just announced that she's leaving the company. That would be expansion project lead Katarina Masadi, Masado, Masado. I don't know if I'm saying your last name right. A frequent guest star in Vidocs and a driving force between the quality of the final shape. She says she's taking some time off before moving somewhere on set, but building something totally new, which indicates she's not heading to work on some existing franchise. We do not know if she is staying within Sony's umbrella. It may be too soon to announce a new expansion lead, but the question is, will there be one? And the larger question that fans have had for a long time, will Destiny 2 continue to get true expansions like it had for the last seven years? Bungie said previously they would talk about the future of Destiny 2 after the Final Shape launch, and they did do that. But they really only cover the next three episodes, ending with a tease for something called Destiny Frontiers, which does not sound like an expansion, but rather perhaps an entire new arc with a theory that Destiny players will leave its current solar system. But will that include expansions? And when he's talking about expansions, guys, obviously we're still getting you know, our, our episodic content, the seasonal model in a way, but, uh, you know, we're hoping that the episodes are going to be more fleshed out and act one, although has not quite hit that mark. I'm hoping act two will. With that being said though, when he, when he talks, when Paul's talking about expansions, he means the big ones, the big annual ones, the ones that everyone pretty much comes back to every single year, the witch queen, uh, the final shape, you know, uh, beyond like things like that. There's some theorize that the destiny is going to switch to an episode only model for a while which is more or less the equivalent of stretched out seasons, and there will be no large expansions between them. However, even with all the uncertainty and the lack of confirmation of new episodes, even with Katarina's departure, I'm still not convinced this is what's going to happen. Why? It's pretty basic. The vast majority of cash that Bungie brings in now directly funneled to new owner Sony is from selling its yearly expansion, or a bundle of that expansion with the subsequent seasons for $100 or so, or past expansions as newer lapsed players try to catch up. Yes, Destiny 2 has microtransactions. Yes, you can buy seasons, but the big drivers of both revenue and then retain a player base that spends money on other stuff is those expansions. I agree. It's the, it's the, I mean, like, look, that, that, if you were to just, to just chop Destiny up and say, hey, we're committing to the seasonal model only, it wouldn't do well. You, you need the big annual expansions. You need the big narrative driving forces 
Now, losing that would be enormous and would mean less money to spend on content production, which would mean less opportunities for engagement and spending and so on. While, yes, Bungie has Marathon coming as a new game, that is a big, big risk in the current multiplayer landscape where everyone is stuck playing Fortnite and Warzone and Apex for the last few years, not giving many newcomers a shot. Bungie needs Destiny to continue and an expansionless future seems almost impossible to envision. I've heard other theories that this is about scaling back and working on Destiny 3, just making episodes for two years and release Destiny 3 in 2026 or something. That timeline is just impossible. Continuing to produce live content while also working on a full-scale sequel that would be, out, would be out that soon. I do believe a Destiny sequel will arrive someday, but not until the next console generation, and it can't be beyond a conceptual phase right now. A game that size would take four to five years to make, most likely which is why I don't think it's coming until PlayStation 6 and Xbox whatever are out, but we'll see. There's a lot of rumors, by the way, that what would happen is PlayStation 6 would launch and its flagship game could be Destiny 3. I also think there's a ton of other games that would be a flagship game for PlayStation 6. Just saying, like, they could literally just be like, hey, Spider-Man, you know what I mean? So it doesn't necessarily have to be D3, right? I think Destiny 2 needs expansions, but so much is changing over there, it's hard to know where things are going. Before Katarina left, game director Joe Blackburn also departed. Meanwhile, more controversial leaders like the seldom seen Pete Parsons, Luke Smith, and Mark Noseworthy remain. I think Bungie needs to start being more specific about what's coming past code names, as the current episode format alone may start losing players quickly. So we know that in August, Bungie's going to be showing us what Frontiers is going to be. How many of you think destiny 2 will not be getting annual expansions anymore can we just get a poll on that all right so 70 percent here say that destiny 2 will continue to get annual expansions obviously this is just a, a twitch poll but i will say it is concerning to see key figures like cat leaf joe blackburn leaf and one of my favorite people at bungie andy or some of you know as chef andy leaf these are key people that led to the success of the final shape you don't just lose people like that, you know? And I know some of you may like be thinking to yourself, maybe th those people weren't the right people. No, those people were the right people. They literally proved themselves. And on top of that, they delivered in the final shape. For whatever reason, those individuals left. And I wish there would have been a way for them to have stayed. Fresh eyes and fresh takes may not be a bad thing, but some of these people are fresh. And Chef Andy was one of the best people I've ever worked with at Bungie. He's great, man. He's great. Yeah, and the way he connected with the community, I think, led to a lot of success leading up to the final shape into light. And so when I see key people like that also leave Bungie, it's just concerning, guys. I look, I'm not I'm not trying to come off doomsday right here. But what I'm saying is these are key people that I would be like, hey, I if I was Bungie, I would be like, I need to keep these people. I need to keep these people. What do I need to do to keep these people and keep having them make more content? The one thing, yes, the one thing that I am that is giving me a glimmer of hope here, outside, of course, of the, the many that are still working at Bungie and still, you know, m working on Destiny. The other thing is DMG came back. And look, when I, I mean, that's that's a great sign. He came back and he didn't come back to go wor work on Marathon or Gummy Bears. He came back for Destiny. That That's a great sign. But the point is, guys, Keep people leaving your company or, you know, that it's always going to be talk, man. There's always going to be talk around that because these are the people that that worked hands on. And look, I'm not saying that Mark Noseworthy, Luke Smith and Pete Parsons weren't working hands on with Destiny 2, the final shape. Maybe they were. But I can tell you for sure, Kat was working hands on every day on D2, the final shape. She knew it inside and out. I was able to, you know, we were able to have conversations with her uh, in depth by not only the narrative, but also just little things about Prismatic. Joe Blackburn, same thing, played it inside and out. The reason why that raid was as difficult as it was is because I guarantee it, Joe, who who literally, that, I mean, that's his bread and butter is, is raid design. You know, that was his send off raid. And that's why it was at that level of difficulty. I will, I will say this, August is gonna be the, the time when we really see what's gonna happen. Uh, we'll see what Frontiers is all about. These are key figures that I hate to see leave Bungie, but maybe there's a variety of reasons why they're leaving. Maybe they're using, you know, not necessarily using it in a bad way. I don't mean that in a, in a negative way, but perhaps this is the best leverage they've ever had in moving on to whatever positions they really, really want. And I would say that if there was ever a 
time to use your position now would be it if you were if you were working on the final shape at the same time uh dmg coming back and working on destiny is a is a great sign continued updates to destiny is is great too and and like sandbox has not slowed down we literally just had a swap here recently where they're going over all the stuff and changes they're going to be making and you know the layout of the next year of content that being the episodic content i mean th this is stuff that bungie seems very committed to so again august is going to roll around we're going to see what next year is going to bring what frontiers is going to look like i very much believe we're going to fix the dreadnought we're going to take the dreadnought we're going to fly it, navigate it into a new system. And um, that's what Frontiers is going to be about. We're finally going to leave Seoul. Should be a good time, man. Should be a good time. Anyways, the point is, we could speculate all we want. And, and I'm fine with speculation. But August is when we really, really know. I believe that we're going to probably see some more episode content next year. And I'm not saying that those episodes won't be impactful. Annual expansion-wise, I would be very, very surprised if Bungie could turn around an annual expansion by June of next year. And I would be extremely surprised if they could do it Considering I believe Marathon is probably going to be launching in June of 2025. That's just my thoughts. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.